A 90-10 policy. What does it mean? What does it matter? I have here a lump of blue dough that represents a base whole life insurance policy. This will buy a lot of permanent death benefit, but it's going to be very slow to build cash value. So what many people do is they'll come in, we'll keep part of the base insurance, but we'll replace the rest with a big chunk of paid up insurance in, represented by the green dough here. So now our policy is about 30 to 40% base, about 60 to 70% paid up additions. This policy builds high cash value and performs very nicely, gives us a nice permanent death benefit in the long run too, actually a higher death benefit down the road when we're more likely to die. Great thing. So people say, well, this is so good. Let's make it even better. Let's take even more of this base insurance out and let's put even more paid up insurance in well, the problem is the IRS is going to tax this type of policy different than the favorable tax treatment that life insurance usually gets. So what we actually have to do is instead of including so much paid up insurance in here, we've got to include some term insurance in here now to boost the death benefit up. So a 90-10 whole life insurance policy actually looks like this. Yes, we were able to get a little bit more paid up insurance in here, but we also have this term insurance that's in here, and there is a cost to that insurance. Let's take a look. On the left, we have a 90-10 policy example. On the right, we have a balance design. This is actually about a 69% paid up additions, 31% base policy. We're not calling it a 70-30 or a 60-40 policy because this ratio can vary and still be a balanced design. Basically, we're getting as much paid up additions into this policy without a term writer. That's one of the things we notice about the 90-10 policy. We're getting a lot of money in here initially, but we also have this big term writer that's increasing the death benefit to huge proportions. How much of that is term insurance? Here are the numbers. Here's the one year renewable term death benefit and how much of the death benefit that is over the first seven years. It is significant. That does come with a cost. And sometimes the cost can be even higher than what you would pay to get a similar term death benefit in a separate policy. Not all insurance companies break this down, but here's an example from one that does. Here is a base policy of $100,000. You can see the cost per thousand dollars of death benefit. This policy also has a term writer, $800,000 term writer. You can see the cost per thousand dollars. If you were to buy this term insurance as a separate 10 year level term policy, you can see the cost per thousand would be significantly less 68 cents per thousand versus 95. And the cost is less on the base policy as well. If we simply have the base policy with a paid up additions writer, it looks a little bit different, but the base policy cost is less per thousand dollars in this example. So that's interesting to keep in mind. Some other differences that we'll notice about the 90-10 example is that once we've paid this initial premium, the premiums go down. Okay, and we ended up stopping them in this example after 10 years, sometimes they continue. In the balanced design, the premiums continue for 10 years in this example. Sometimes they can stop after seven or even sooner and still be a balanced policy, but we have spread the premiums out a little bit. Something else we notice is that the 90-10 policy, we're breaking even total premiums paid cost basis being less than total cash value. That happens by year six. Whereas in the balanced design, it takes a little bit longer. It takes up to 10 years. So I like that. That's a plus for the 90-10 example. But let's see what happens over here on the death benefit side. Death benefit goes down once the term insurance comes off on the 9010. It also goes down when we stop premiums and it continues going down for, I think it's another 10 to 15 years. Don't quote me on the exact numbers. But as this table continues, it continues going down before it starts going up again. You'll see that a little bit clearer when we get to the graph. Over here on the balance design, uh, the death benefit does go down when we stop premiums, but then it immediately starts going up again. I like that for the balance design. Let's look at the policy values here. Here is the 90-10 policy premiums graph. This is cumulative, so we call it cost basis. Then we have the projected cash value, the blue line, and the de death benefit. You can see that big drop in the death benefit. You can see then it starts growing a little bit, and then we drop the premium entirely, and you can see this long period where it actually drops before it starts rising again. 
With more balanced policy design, here's the cost basis. We're actually putting a little bit more in premiums to get to the $1 million mark on this policy. But look how much more potential the cash value growth has in this policy. And even though the death benefit is starting out lower, it also has the potential to go much higher at the time we're more likely to die. That's a good thing. I like that for the balance policy. Another way we can look at this is to look at the rate of return that you would have to earn on the premiums for each policy in order to end up with the cash value. This is called an internal rate of return. And some things we see initially is that once these lines cross the 0% mark, that happens at year six with the 90-10 policy, year 10 with the more balanced design, this is the break even point, but then we can see it ends up switching places about 17 years in. So for the first 16 years, the 90-10 policy seems more efficient, but then long-term, the balanced policy is more efficient. Same thing happens on the death benefit. You can see the 90-10 starts out higher, better, but then about 21, 20, 21 years in, it, they switch places. And again, the death benefit is more efficient in the long run for the balanced policy. Another way we can look at this is say, well, what if you were taking policy loans? Doesn't having the 90-10 policy give you more opportunity to finance a project? Well, if the funding is available at the same time, in this case, we had $400,000 available in the first year and then $100,000 thereafter for the next six years. We had to figure out the policy funding and everything on, on both policies with those cash flows. So if we're going to make an investment, in this case, let's say we are going to make investments over a five-year period, and then we're going to hold those until the 10th year. And then we'll cash those out and use that as a comparison point from there and continuing forward into the future. So here are the typical investments that you can make using that model with a 90-10 policy. And here's the, the, the similar investments you can make with the balance model. The difference is that here with the balance policy, some of this is coming from policy loans, but not all of it. In the 90-10 example, all of this first year is coming from a policy loan. Overall, we're actually able to invest a little bit more with the balanced method, I don't consider this a critical point for this example, because if I worked with the numbers a little bit, I could probably get this to be either way. But uh, the, in this particular example, it is showing us an extra potential for $23,000 of growth there if we're earning 8% on the investment option outside the policy. Now, let's look at the other piece of this. Here are the policy loans that we're actually taking to make this investment both for the 90-10 and for the balanced policy. You can see the 90-10 is starting out almost $300,000 higher right out the gate in year one. This is uh, month two. Uh, so what happens is we make the investment in month one, and then we take a look at the policy loan in month two. So each of these months are delayed by one month. Uh, down here, you can see we have over the 10 years that we have our policy loans outstanding on this, we have quite a bit more on average outstanding than we do on the balanced policy example. This greater outstanding policy loan represents an additional $90,000 in interest that the 90-10 model has to pay. So that's a negative for the 90-10, another positive for the balanced method. Uh, that wouldn't necessarily be bad to pay that interest if the policy is gonna grow that much more for us. But let's look at the numbers. 90-10 uh, values here in the blue, and what we're doing with the dark blue line here is total accounts is simply meaning what is the cash value, the net cash value in the policy, plus any money that's outside the policy. Okay, so I, I sometimes abbreviate that MMA or money manager account. So that's the combination of those two. You can see that it's staying down pretty close to zero because we're taking large policy loans and investing it. And then when those investments cash out in year 10, you can see that jumps up then in year 11 and shows more of the policy growth thereafter. The light blue line here is showing net death benefit, so it's taking the total death benefit, subtracting any policy loan outstanding. You can see the big drop here, and then some of that comes back when we pay off the policy loans, and then you can see the, the similar growth over time. And then for the balanced option, we see the similar values in green. And you look at the ending values over here, and that may not look like a huge amount of difference over 30 years, 
But because of the scale of this graph, that is a difference of over $400,000 in favor of the balanced policy option. And if we look at the death benefit, 500,000 higher um, out at the time when you're more likely to die. So that's a, that's a positive thing for our balanced method here. Something else we can do is we can add in the policy loans here. Again, doesn't look like a whole lot of difference, but if we isolate the policy loans just by themselves for the first 10 years, you can see you know, that $300,000 difference initially, and then they get closer over time because we're taking larger policy loans from the balanced option uh, as we get closer to that 10th year. Overall, though, the 9010 policy example has $181,000 more outstanding in policy loans over those first 10 years than the balanced option. So that comes with an interest cost. That's a lot of information to go through. So if you're looking to choose between a balanced policy design and a 90-10 policy, do you have to go through all of that to make your decision? Thank God, no. Here's the takeaway. If you're looking to put a lot of money into a policy so you can take it out and make other investments over time, then a 90-10 policy is not right for you. Number two, if you have a bunch of money that you're looking to get into a policy and you're not planning to take policy loans, then a 90-10 policy might be right for you, but a balanced policy still may work better. And number three, if you don't know what the future holds, don't know if you'll be taking policy loans or not, then a 90-10 policy is probably not right for you. At McPhee Insurance, we specialize in designing high cash value whole life insurance. We look at the numbers for you and help make your decision easy. So give us a call, 702-660-7000. We look forward to helping you with your life insurance needs. <music>